Maps are playable areas in video games which act as the playing field for which everything happens. From the open world maps of Mario Odyssey to the impossible levels of Geometry Dash, Brawl Stars, the multiplayer arena game is no different. And although some of these maps are crafted with a fun and fair experience in mind, well, you can't always get what you wish for. There are 70 Brawlers playable in Brawl Stars. Each one has their own special abilities ranging from a dude to a snow cone machine or a flea. They all fight on the same plane on a predetermined map. Each one is laid out on a tile grid with obstacles placed strategically in. Whether it be bushes, walls, teleporters, spikes, or water, each tile matters and will ultimately control the Brawlers played on the map. Out of the hundreds of maps that were made, some of them were not as well received, like Cavern Churn. But first, we have to understand that I'm a casual player, my sources are Reddit and professional players, so don't expect an entire breakdown of each map. One of the most controversial ones, Cavern Churn never seems to go away. Consisting of a middle full of bushes, it's clear why nobody really enjoys the showdown map. Tanks, throwers, and assassins thrive, making this map not only incredibly RNG, but rage inducing. In most cases, it's near impossible to escape once seen in the bushes, and this makes picks like Tara with her vision gadget and Bo with his longer sight star power insanely strong. If you didn't play either of these brawlers or a close range high DPS unit like Shelly or a thrower team for survival, well, you're just screwed. Usually speaking, Showdown is not a competitive mode. It's plagued with teamers, Edgars, and generally unfair matchups. It's more for the casual player, for someone who wants fun without the stress of 3v3 matches or bad teammates. To say Cavern Churn, or any Showdown map for that matter, is one of the worst is to be taken lightly. Let's shift our focus over to Hot Zone in Dueling Beetles. One zone lies in the middle of the map with three narrow lanes being one of the most annoying parts of the map. Without a suitable wall breaker or thrower, it's nearly impossible to come back since middle control is so heavily favored. Usually, people pick brawlers with solid area control like Tick, Penny, or Amber, which just make things even worse. One wrong move for your team essentially means game over, since the enemy will have control over two thirds of the map with plenty of space to attack with little for you, assuming no walls have been broken. Now, when playing Hot Zone, control is everything. You want control over not only the zones, but the enemy. Massive attack flips everything you know on its head. Contrary to literally every other Hot Zone map, this one favors throwers, tanks, and chipping away at the zone. There are two zones, only accessible through jump pads on either side or a little sliver on the right. Without someone to break fences or walls, it makes it near impossible to enter if the enemy decides to camp in the zone and impossible to escape. The problem with this map is that there's limited options to enter or exit and leaves little to no creativity or even choice in how you play. Not only this, but the brawlers who are good, well, they're just not fun to play against. This goes down as one of the worst hot zone maps in history. In this team-based strategy game, even more than the players themselves, but the map rotation completely dictates who you want to play. As you saw, Dueling Beetles and Massive Attack have insanely different metas. A map can be horrible for its own separate reasons, as we saw in these two. And Brawl Ball is no better. Substitutes, Playbox, and Swear Off are designed differently to the usual Brawl Ball map. In most cases, this game mode is wide open with lots of area for shooting the ball. These maps, well, they decide otherwise. Closed quarters. Entrapped in the maze of walls and bushes, movement is disrupted, and thus so does the map meta. What's created is this disgusting amalgamation of wall breakers and close range brawlers, different from the usual competitive and, well, fun version of Brawl Ball. Some maps were so bad that they only lasted in the game for a few days, and I present to you Barrel Vault. If you thought Shelly was good now, you've never played this map. Launch pads in Brawl Ball is never a good idea. Pair that with the closed center and you're in for a terrible time. With the abundance of barrels, cheese was inevitable, and it was an absolute mess, and deserved to be removed from rotation. Speaking for all of us, it's clear that when a single brawler or two can completely dominate a map, it's not well made, and should be gone. Now with all the different and unique obstacles in Brawl Stars, some work far better in one than another. A good example of this is Bounty, where the rope fences offer a way for long range brawlers to be safe from tanks, but still get damaged through. The bushes in Showdown work great for sneak attacks and bush camping. Water, on the other hand, is very finicky. In the Brawl Ball map pool party, things get interesting. You see, water doesn't work the same as other obstacles. It's permanent, and only one brawler can actually go on top of it. So, by that logic, what would happen if a ball were to be kicked on top? Well, it gets stuck, and only leaves after a few seconds. And there's a reason no Brawl Ball map has water anymore. 
Island Invasion is one of the most unique maps in the game. Set in Showdown, there's a massive ring of bushes with a pretty open center. Similar to Cavern Churn, tanks have control. Bushes are placed in a way that inhibits squishier brawlers to thrive, from behind a wall to the wide perimeter and the middle, perfect for teaming. Competitive play is near impossible, and with the recent addition of Hypercharge, it's not looking good for this map. Snake Prairie is a bounty map full of bushes without any in the middle. It's great for close range brawlers, but not so much for anyone else, which is understandable for a bounty map. But we're not here to talk about bounty, we're here for gem grab in Sapphire Plains. If you've ever played a round of gem grab before, you'd know that comebacks are inevitable, either for you or the opposing team. In most cases, it's quite challenging to get back the gems, but in Sapphire Plains, it's easy. Is Brawl Stars really Brawl Stars without infinite Nani supers? The knockout map Crime Water makes sure it happens. Back in the day, Bo's totem used to infinitely charge supers. All you had to do was stand there and juice up. Nowadays, it's garbage, but this was the way to play at the time because of many factors. But most notably, the lack of land to walk on. Engaging with the Nani or Bo through the middle path would most certainly mean death, and as well, the peep would be able to travel wherever it passes. Even the removed game modes have terrible maps, which shows a lot. Not only was the game mode bad, but so were the maps. Hold the Trophy was arguably one of the worst game modes brought stars has ever created. It was a game of keep away, and it was very stale, and the meta was skewed to only favor certain brawlers over others, like Primo or Gale. But I talked all about this on a previous video because this map was horrible. Hot Pursuit doesn't look too bad on the surface, but when people realized there was cheese to be had, they were feasting. If you took Primo or really any throwable wall breaker for that matter into the corner, you could then trap the trophy into that spot, making it impossible for enemies to not only get it, but get you. Even worse than this though was Snowtail Thieves, which honestly, I love the game mode. The mode was so fun, but the maps were extremely lackluster. The whole premise was capture the trophy, and when I first saw these maps, they didn't look that bad. Easy money required a brawler who could jump over walls like Brock or Dynamite, as well as this, scoring a point in this map was incredibly easy. It took one super to get a point, and there was nothing the enemy could do. That's not all. Some maps are just purposely made terrible, like Nurak Nurivak, Cavern Churn Backward, Purple Paradise, or Trap Map. All of these are friendly battle exclusives, but made just for pure fun, and honestly, looking at these, they look better than some of the previous ones I showed you. Surprisingly enough, Cavern Turn Backwards was playable as a real map in rotation for a day. There's not much else to say about these three, they were just good fun and just amazing. It's a shame that they were all removed for one reason or another. Throughout all of these, a commonality is shown. Map design cannot by any circumstance revolve around a single brawler or a group of them. There needs to be some sort of diversity in the selection you choose, where a majority of brawlers can work if played right in the right game mode. If not, then you kinda ruin the mode. It's not fun to play match after match of the same thing and will ultimately ruin it for the majority. Thank you for watching. <laughs> bye.